Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion based on areas using integration. And there is a small change. Till the last video, we discussed Cartesian system and then the parametric form. It's the same thing, Cartesian system, but we used parametric equations. And now we are going to change the system itself. We are going to use the polar coordinate system. Anyway, as always, I will give you an introduction first because there might be some students who are interested in the logic behind the formula. And always remember, only students who are curious, only students who are ready to spend 10 to 15 minutes listening to this part will be really successful in solving the problems. Anyway, for the other students who are not that interested, um, use the formula, solve it, you will get the answer. Anyway, first thing, Cartesian system means we will have the x-axis and the y-axis. In polar system, instead of x-axis, we will have one point and one line and the point will be called the pole. It's kind of like the origin and the line will be called initial line and this is a what you call different system for example uh, in our cartesian system if you want to locate a point what you do is you measure the distance in the x-axis or parallel to the x-axis and let's say that is one two three units. let's say this is three units and then you d measure the distance parallel to the y-axis and let's say this is one unit so the coordinate of that point will be 3 comma 1 and likewise every point in the plane every point in the plane will have a unique actually this this is a specialty of Cartesian system unique representation in the format x comma y and the equations in Cartesian system will always come in terms of x and y. Now we are going for a completely different system, the polar coordinate system. So in the polar coordinate system, instead of our x-axis and y-axis, we take a point called the pole and a line called the initial line. It is kind of like the positive x-axis. Okay, now suppose uh, you want to what you call, locate a point, let's say this point. What you do is you measure the distance from pole to the point. And let's denote that by R. And you also measure the angle from the initial line to this orange radius vector. And we call it theta. And the point will be called r comma theta okay it's as simple as that uh, so suppose you want to locate 3 comma 90 degree suppose you want to locate 3 comma 90 degree so look at this one will be length and one will be angle so what you do is you start from here and move in anti-clockwise direction whenever the angle is given to be positive uh, positive angle means move in anti-clockwise, opposite to the clock. So, I move 90 degrees. How much? 90 degrees. And remember, this, this uh, what you call thing is like a clock, but uh, opposite to the clock. And I move, I move, I move till I reach what you call 90 degrees. And now, look at this. This will be the positive side of 90 degrees and if you draw in this direction this will be negative side of the 90 degrees but we have to plot 3 3 is positive so the point will be 1 2 3 so this will be the required point so this is the point 3 comma 90 degree okay so let's go for another point so let's say uh, i need 2 comma 180 degree so the same logic, uh, we start here, this is 0 degree and since the angle is positive, I move in the positive direction, anti-clockwise direction. So I move like a clock but opposite to the clock. 
I reach 90 degree, maybe 120 degree and soon I reach how much? 180 degree. Now look at this. When you move like this, see you are moving like this in angle. We are moving opposite to the clock. So this is positive direction in 180 degrees and this is negative direction in 180 degrees. So the so one interesting thing is corresponding to every angle let's say this is 20 degrees so this is positive in 20 degrees and this is negative in 20 degrees so one interesting aspect is corresponding to every angle there will be positive and negative not like our cartesian system where only 0 degree and what you call 90 degree are treated as positive and others are negative not like that every angle will be corresponding to positive and negative now two units so i have to move one two so this point will be two comma 180 degrees okay so you're good in marking those things so let's start with the theory behind areas okay let's say we have a function r equal to f of theta see uh, instead of our y equal to f of x now we have r equal to f of theta okay Anyway, functions will correspond to graph uh, because there will be a lot of points satisfying this equation and let's say this is the graph. And let's suppose, let's suppose I'm interested in the area from this, uh, what do you call, I'll, I'll draw two, two blue lines and let's say I'm interested in this much area. Is that clear? Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to check is this angle is theta 1. And if you revolve this much, the angle is theta 2. So I'll make it very clear. I'm interested in the area between the blue radius vectors and enclosed by the function r is equal to f of theta. Okay. And to find this area we use the trick of sectors and uh, i will recollect something for you an arc is a part of a circle an arc is a part of a circle so just imagine you have an arc and since it corresponds to a circle i can mark the radius here and let's say this angle is theta then the area of this sector this is called a sector there will be a circular part and this is the, if you imagine, this will be the big circle. Now, the area of this part will be 1 by 2 r square theta. So, what is the area of this much part? 1 by 2 r square theta. Okay, now we use this logic. Look at this. Uh, in the Cartesian system, I told you we have a graph like this. And um, suppose this is A and this is B every height is a rectangle do you remember that logic and we measured the area of the rectangle and then added everything using integration because integration is addition anyway here we have a function r equal to f of theta and we are interested in the area between the blue vector lines these blue vectors and this angle is theta 1 and this angle is theta 2 okay now look at this if you consider you can see various r values given by the function r equal to f of theta that means when you plug in theta you get r when you plug in theta you get r so corresponding to every input we will get uh, blue line green line blue line of different 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 length now look at this if you magnify uh, if you magnify uh, this green line i feel as if the green line is an part of a sector it's it's so small if small small I'm, I'm asking you to magnify like what you call billions and billions mathematically infinite number of times so this green line can be considered as a sector and let's say it makes a small angle d theta uh, this is theoretical uh, don't ask me to magnify that much I cannot magnify but trust me the green line looks like a sector it's like it starts from here and it goes and definitely it's like a small yeah 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 it's a sector and let's say this is r 
and this is also R because corresponding to every value there will be input uh, input of theta there will be R and the angle between them is d theta. So what will be the area of this sector? 1 by 2 R into R d theta. Now look at this there will be many 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 like I told you in Cartesian there will be many 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 green lines here. So you are going to add them from theta 1 to theta 2 and this will give us the area of this punch part. Anyway that is the theory behind it and those students who are not that much interested in theory I will give you the formula. So look at this in polar coordinate system the function will look in the format r equal to f of theta there will not be x and y and the first thing to do is you have to identify this with the graph. Uh, there is a topic called tracing of curves uh, which is not in your syllabus but there is a topic called tracing of curves. So be good with cardioid, circle etc etc. Anyway, um, suppose you want, let's say this is the graph. Oops, I'm not supposed to draw the x-axis, y-axis. What should you draw? Yeah, only this much. And let's say this is the graph of the function. And suppose you're interested in the area between these two blue lines. That is, the first one makes angle theta 1 with the initial line. And second one makes angle theta 2 with the initial line then the area in between is given by integral theta 1 to theta 2 1 by 2 r square d theta okay so that's the theory behind areas and there is a very small video in the next video we will do a lot of problems based on area in polar coordinate system so as always if you like the video please share subscribe and like and I'll be back soon. So till then, my friends, bye.